Welcome back, everybody. It is still Mother's Day, May 13th, 2018, 8.08 p.m. All right, we got a few things to talk about. Uh, we have a situation developing in the Caribbean that we've been following. Now, we know Florida has been getting saturated. Uh, areas like Jupiter, Florida, um, Orlando, down Pensacola. Uh, we're talking three to four inches of rain just today alone. So we definitely have a tropical system uh, moving through Florida as we speak and now the National Hurricane Center has actually put a percentage on cyclone formation um, On this so this is not just the GFS. This is the CMC model the European model Basically all three of those models are in agreement that uh, There are chances now of something forming now the only thing showing definite uh, Movement here we have Ventu sky here showing um, this could be a category 3 storm uh, if this stays as is. Now I'm going to back this up because we're dealing with two different systems here. Uh, this is not the system that is going to be within this five day period that I'm about to show you. This actually starts after the fact. So we have two separate systems to watch, two tropical waves. We have one, um, if I move to current time here, which is the 13th, we change to the 14th. We start to see the rotation here just above Cuba, uh, just to the west of the Keys in Florida, which are currently getting saturated right now. They have higher rain rates than the areas I just spoke about, Jupiter, uh, Orlando, Lake Okeechobee, areas like that. So what you're seeing here is this counterclockwise rotation has now been given a very high probability, well not very high, but higher than we've seen at least this season so far to develop a new tropical cyclone. Here are the five day rain rates. Now you can see these orange colors here. Uh, you match that to this chart here. We're talking five to seven inches of rain over the next five days. So this is certainly a tropical system with a lot of moisture um, br moving right up to South Florida. And now it's showing that it's going to move up through the panhandle, uh, possibly affecting Mississippi, Alabama. And then if this thing does become a tropical cyclone, we need to start talking about other states up into the U.S. as well. Now, in this chart here, you can kind of see the favorable areas. This is the area that we're talking about in the next five days to develop 40% chance. And then down here, just where the tip of South America begins to touch the Caribbean is that second area that we need to watch that actually shows up on Ventu Sky as a full-blown hurricane. So we do have a lot of action going on. Um, the KLY Strone 9 site that we look at often is showing a high favorability in this area as well. This is the warmest waters, some of the warmest in the world. Uh, to keep in mind, we need to remember that during hurricane season. Uh, these waters stay warm all year round, just if they dip below that 80 degree temperature, excuse me, um, they're not that favorable for tropical storm or cyclone formation, but they are right now, and that is why we're looking at this. Here's a lightning chart really quick to show you. There's not too much lightning from this system right now. That is going to change. You'll probably notice over the next 24 hours that this band of lightning here by Texas will be that dense lightning that we see over Florida. As this moves up, we hit warmer temperatures, you will see a lot more lightning. We do have spotty thunderstorms all over the U.S., but this video is specific to these cyclones we're talking about. Now, if you guys remember from last year, this was a very common website. Now, they don't even open this website for information until June 1st, unless there's something to watch, which there clearly is. So, this chart is showing a 30% chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours. That is obviously two days. Uh, the 40% chance is over five days. So, when you see the five-day a little bit higher than the two-day, that's a little more um, consistent as far as this actually forming. So I'm not saying it's going to form. I'm saying all the uh, pieces that we need are there. We have minimal wind shear going on right now. In fact, in the last couple of days alone, the wind shear has stopped. We have a west to east wind shear that we've been talking about a lot lately, and that aided in our tornado season as well. We have the west to east shear wind, then we have the upflow from the Gulf. We get the tornadoes that go up Tornado Alley and Tornado Valley. Um, I'm going to say that all the time now because it's two different uh, terms, but they're both used by different weather channels, so um, take that for what it's worth. So here's our 30% chance right here. Um, now, if we click on the second chart here, we get our 40% chance. Now, you can see here how it wants to move up the west coast of Florida. That is because it's forming underneath Cuba. We're not dealing with a storm that came off the west coast of Africa and rode that warm water belt through the Leeward Islands and then through uh, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and then up into the Bahamas. We're talking about a storm that formed right where Nate formed and then shot that gap. If you guys remember, Nate came right through this gap here and went right up through the Panhandle, Mississippi, Florida, and then came up 
towards the East Coast. So uh, we're not going to look that far ahead yet, but this is worth talking about. When the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida actually puts this data out, it is certainly something you want to talk about and share with followers. That's why I'm here doing this with you. Now, as far as that second situation goes, where we saw that little color down here, let's take a look at where that falls, because that's going to be another... Uh, in fact, it shows there's being a more serious situation than this current one we're going to be dealing with. So there's absolutely a chance of cyclone formation, uh, which could be Hurricane Alberto. That would be our first name of the season. Uh, letter B would be, let's check it out while we have the time here, uh, Hurricane 2018. And here we are with our names for the Atlantic hurricane season. Here's 2018. We have Alberto and then B, uh, Berryl, B-E-R-Y-L. That's an odd name to pronounce. We have that right there. And then here's Alberto. Those would be our first cyclones of the year. Now let's look at tropical tidbits and see when exactly this second one is projected to start. We can see right around this area we start getting that counterclockwise rotation. Um, a lot of wind from the Pacific Ocean comes over this land gap right here and then affects the Atlantic Ocean waters in the Caribbean. Here is Friday the 18th, Saturday the 19th, Sunday the 20th is when we start to get our tropical wave. You can see it right there. It begins to form. It is all over water. By the 21st we have clear cut rotation. 22nd shows a basically tropical storm slash hurricane category one in this area and then by the 23rd Ventu Sky wants to show us um, its first hurricane of the season as we all saw that the 13th 14th and 15th does not show a hurricane here even though the hurricane center has put 40 percent chance over five days on it so that is what we want to talk about here guys if we look at our mimic chart we can almost start to see that counterclockwise rotation here in the last couple frames right there right when you look up right to the north of Cuba right in this area where I have the magnifying glass the last couple frames you start seeing that bend over and that's where you start getting the rotation and that is why the National Hurricane Center has put an actual chance on this there's a little anomaly back here by the uh, the coast of Africa that was pretty interesting too. check that out look right in this area in the bottom right corner right there those are always fun to see uh, so there we go, guys. That is the the beginning of a little bit of rotation there. Obviously, there is it is below 50%, so there's a chance that it may not form at all. But when the Hurricane Center comes onto charts like these and actually mark things on them, that is something you want to pay attention to. This is the first time of the season we've had this actually marked, unless we count the Pacific Ocean, which the season starts officially in two days. So that's what I have for you for today, guys. Keep an eye on this very... Uh, closely to say the least now as far as the rest of the weather goes in the US you could just see this monster storm moving up into South Florida uh, Florida's gonna be dealing with rain for almost a week straight so uh, be prepared for that uh, the Northeast just got cleared of some rain we had rain here down in Southeast Pennsylvania once again and we have a pretty significant storm passing through Iowa and moving its way just under the Great Lakes now and then we have that big um, situation going on in northern Texas by Amarillo where the um, the Merrill fire was that actually caused a thunderstorm okay we had a ground fire causing a hail and thunderstorm in Texas that was a previous video for those of you that had not seen that just go back on my channel and you can watch that right now and that's all I got for you for now guys so we got 40 percent chance over five days tropical cyclone uh, in the Caribbean moving up towards Florida we will absolutely keep an eye on this Everybody have a great night, have a great end to your Mother's Day, and I will talk to you all very soon, um, actually very early tomorrow morning. Have a great night, guys. Bye-bye.